We yeah, so we feel that um, Nintendo since the, uh, this reception to the Switch was better than expected, we uh that the ex anal other analyst expectations on GameStop as may not have been uh properly calculated as you know the Nintendo Switch may have a bigger impact than expected. Uh, besides that, Xbox Scorpio was, uh, which is the latest refresh uh, of the Xbox, was uh, not announced yet. But certain um, insiders were were given a preview of the Xbox Scorpio, uh, which is slated to be released later this year, and they have said that it's and they, these insiders were given uh, have given it very glowing reviews. Um, they say it's a very high-end machine. In fact, when it releases, it's likely to be the most powerful uh, console on the market at the moment. And uh, we believe that this might likely is likely to drive gamers to want to go and purchase it, especially those who have been sitting on the fence at this point in time. They're thinking of buying an Xbox, but you know it's already four years old. Maybe they'll wait and for the next Xbox or something to come up. Um, this might entice these gamers to go and uh, purchase the new Xbox since it's uh, such a powerful machine. And uh, we feel that all these near-term catalysts might actually boost the sales for GameStops uh, in, in 2017. So in the short term, these are certain catalysts that might help them to, uh, to boost sales. So um, besides that, you can take a look at this is the full year 2016 sales category. Uh, you can see that, as mentioned before, that their hardware and software, um, video games in general, have been on a downtrend as uh, people move further and further away, uh, cyclical demand as well as uh, change in um, the way that people buy games. But a bright spot you can see is actually the technology and brands and the collectibles section. Um, so the new CEO has mentioned, sorry, not not CEO, new CEO, but CEO, the management of GameStop has mentioned that uh, they intend to continue to transition away from these uh, from video games and in order to combat this uh, to adapt to this declining trend, and instead they're going to move towards other things such as their technology brands and collectibles um, in order to achieve a revenue mix of about 50% from games and 50% from others. So you can see that they've been able to grow their technology brands, for example, by about 52.4% year-on-year, as well as the collectibles about uh, almost 60% year-on-year. Um, uh, you can see here, this is the uh, table for the profit margins, that the, even though video games were their core section, the amount of profit margin from the video games were not exactly uh, very high, 11% from new hardware and 24% from old uh, from new software, um, whereas the, for when it comes to uh, technology brands and collectibles, you can see that the profit margins for these were 68% and about 35%. So um, if GameStop is able to achieve that shift in their revenue mix to account for 50%, um, this could cause some revenue. Ex uh, this could cross, cause some gross margin expansion. And uh, allow their their margins gross margins to go up. And GameStop currently seems to be on track to achieve that, you know, because their current other segment accounts for about thirty six point nine percent of their total revenue, which is up from about twenty four percent year on year, uh, compared to uh, it's growing by you know almost thirteen percent. Uh, on track towards their fifty percent margin. So, all in all, we believe that uh, GameStop is facing, um, you know, certain headwinds. Um, not just them, but all other retailers are, are facing a lot of headwinds right now from the change to e-commerce and digital. But that uh, GameStop, right this point in time, uh, is taking steps to transition away from these uh, retail issues, and at the same time, there are certain near-term catalysts that might boost their sales. So right now, we'll, I'll pass on to Jeremy, who's uh, going to talk about the technicals of this uh, uh, of this stock in a moment. Good morning, guys. Jeremy speaking again. So my part, I'll just briefly go through what the chart is looking like for this stock. So on the screen over here, you can see this is gaming stock uh, on the daily time frame. 
So obviously, games of the family is still moving in long trend. Uh, obviously, the high that we have seen most recently was back in November of 2014, two years ago. The high was around four point seven dollars, and right now, can you guys hear me? Uh, sorry, can you guys hear me? Okay, is it okay? Okay, I'll continue from here. So like I mentioned, GameStop is currently trading still in a long-term downtrend. So the high that we have seen uh, was back in 2015 November period, whereby the high was around 48 $47 each level. And since then, it has been moving in the downtrend and hit to a recent low of around $20.10. So obviously, the downtrend is still pretty strong here. And something interesting that we noted is uh, GameStop tends to sort of... Uh, spike out after uh, overselling and what I mean by overselling is when the relative strength index sort of a signals uh, oversold uh, environment. Uh, for those that don't really follow TA so much, uh, the bottom panel here is the relative strength index. So anything above 70 uh, represents overbought and anything below 30 represents oversold. Uh, as you can see over here, I've actually highlighted three boxes over here to sort of uh, show some kind of interesting price action pattern. So you can see over here, back in November period of 2016 last year, uh, whenever we get a strong gap down day, uh, during this period was 12%, uh, the gap down actually resulted in the RSI actually dipping below 30, which represents an oversold kind of uh, sentiment. And you can see over there, whenever we get a strong gap down that corresponds to uh, RSI that signals oversold, whenever the recovery sort of a bigs into the picture, uh, the game stock kind of a rebound pretty nicely and recovered the losses and closed the gap over here. And same price action pattern happened again back in around January of this year. So same thing over here. Uh, on the day itself, GameStop actually gap down 9%. And as a result, you can see the RSI actually deep below or somewhere near the 30 level again that represents uh, oversold. Uh, and once recovery sort of uh, uh, gets back into the picture, you can see uh, the recovery is actually pretty strong and we eventually cover the gap that we have lost. And during these two scenarios over there, you can see uh, price don't just recover the gap over there, and it actually continued to recapture ground uh, for at least another two to three more weeks. So where we are right now, pretty much another similar kind of price action pattern playing out again. So around this period over here, May, I mean March, April period, uh, GameStop again suffered a significant loss. 10% gap down there again, I think this was due to earnings again. So you can see over here that 10% gap down actually brought prices back down to, uh, I would say, a significant support level uh, that was being formed around this period, $20.10 to $20.59 each level. So this support area, I think, is a crucial area to watch out for. Uh, so long as this particular support level of 2010 to 2059 holds, then there's a pretty high chance that we will see this recovery actually uh, brings prices back up to cover the gap over here at 23.96 and if history is any indicator then there's a high chance that the gap is being filled and we should see the recovery actually continues to actually take out the previous two resistance level at around 2.535 to 2.648 level. Uh, like I mentioned again you can see the RSI the most recent slam down in price actually brought the RSI down to a low of 24 which is pretty significant in terms of how oversold it is. So all in all I uh, just want to reiterate that long-term downtrend is still in play. However, what we want to capture over here is to recapture the uh, recovery of the gap and to play the closing of the gap to 2396 level. Then in terms of uh, trade scenarios, uh, what is our trade plan? Basically, this trade was initiated on last Thursday's uh, closing price. So in a way, this trade is really been initiated at 2184 and to strategically place the stop loss for this particular trade uh, we believe that strategically it should be below this uh, previous support level of 2010 level so for us we place a stop loss slightly below this level and stop loss for this particular trade is at 1995 and hence like I mentioned we are playing to recapture the gap over here and take profit over here for conservative trade uh, probably our take profit will be at 23.96 level. And for more aggress aggressive traders, 
uh, some other take profit levels to look out for will be this 2535 resistance level as well as this 2648 level. So this is just to reiterate again the trading action. Like I mentioned, the entry price, the stop loss, and the target price. And yeah, with that, uh, we've come to the end of uh, this presentation. Uh, we'll pause right now for Q&A, if there is any. Hi, there's a question asking regarding uh, there's a gap in mid-August that wasn't being filled. Uh, is there a likely scenario that the current pattern will play out like the one in mid-August? So what I'm assuming is you're referring to this particular gap over here. So uh, there is actually a little bit uh, different kind of a price action playing out for this particular gap down period as compared to the other three that we pointed out over here. You can see over here when this gap down actually happened, the RSI wasn't actually uh, nearing the oversold region. Whereas compared to the previous three examples that are boxed up over here, whenever the strong slam down in price, the strong gap down in price actually resulted in the RSI uh, showing oversold cover sentiment. So that was uh, one of the things that we noted that uh, is important for us to trade this particular recovery trade as compared to the one over here whereby the RSI was still uh, slightly above the oversold region. Uh, and moreover, you can see over here, the recovery since then was pretty weak. The gap down actually took prices down, I think, pretty significantly from around 31 level each to a low of around 28. But since then, you can see the recovery was just this one small hammer over here, and uh, subsequently, there wasn't any follow-through. So the price section there was definitely way weaker than the one we have seen over at these past three examples, whereby uh, the recovery was actually pretty strong. We can see strong green bars building up after the strong sell-off uh, that corresponds with the oversold kind of uh, sentiment. So in a way, these three examples uh, pretty much ties in perfectly, uh, whereby it shows strong gap down in price that corresponds with uh, RSI that's oversold, uh, as well as bullish price action that is required for us to believe that there was a recovery that is really uh, moving in play. As compared to the one over here whereby the sell-off uh, wasn't really signaling oversold and at the same time there wasn't any bullish price action back then. So I believe that the current example is more similar to the previous two examples over here rather than the one in mid-May where it failed to actually recover the gap. Uh, okay, if there is no more questions, then uh, we'll end today's... Oh, hold on a second. Hi, there's a question regarding on the uh, wall over here. By uh, questions asking, the Fed is expected to hike two more times this year. Uh, will the dollar continue to strengthen and hence at the flip side will cause gold to sell off? Uh, we actually sort of uh, explained this quite thoroughly in the previous presentation on gold, where we showed that the Fed rate hike does not necessarily translate into uh, sell off in gold due to the fact that by inflation is the main reason the Fed is hiking interest rate and not because the 
US economy is really strengthening. So over here, we believe uh, what is still showing up in the market is that inflation right now is still roaring. And with oil prices recovering again right now back above 50, chances are that inflation will continue to stay elevated. And hence, uh, even though the Fed might continue to sort of hike twice more this year, we believe uh, inflation will continue to take precedent over the uh, rate hike and hence will cause the dollar to sort of not strengthen that much because inflation is still out there and hence uh, gold should continue to sort of benefit from the higher inflationary data point. And another point that uh, the question is asking, uh, will the recovery of the global economy uh, sort of sway investors to move on to a risk on uh, That part of the question in terms of the recovery, US data sort of has been sort of a Keeping down again after the November election. Uh, most recently, a two months prior data point has sort of a disappointed market recently in terms of the soft data as well as hard data. So, do we really see the US economy recovering from here? GDP for Q1 of this year, uh, estimate from Atlanta's Fed is coming out to be 0.6% Q on Q. So, if that particular data point comes out to be at 0.6% for Q1, uh, we believe that. That by itself should sort of uh, cause market participants to sort of uh, rethink about their risk on mode that we have been seeing since uh, November election and probably sway them towards the safer side of things. And moreover, uh, with the market right now witnessing more and more economic as well as political turmoil, uh, most recently last Friday, whereby Trump just launched another 59 uh, Tomahawk missiles uh, over to Syria. We believe the war kind of a scenario uh, sort of a pent up at a higher elevated level right now. So in terms of risk on mode, we believe that this risk on mode should stay limited and we believe that gold should continue to, do, continue to play more towards the safe haven side. And moving forward, it should be closer towards the safe haven play rather than a risk on mode play. We should believe then gold again should continue to benefit uh, moving forward. Okay, as a question asking, uh, the most recent deployment of uh, Navy ships to Korea Peninsula, uh, will it actually affect equity performance? Uh, obviously, we have seen the most recent example last Friday when uh, Trump actually launched 59 Tomahawk missiles to Syria. You can see what happened to the futures equity market. Futures actually slide pretty badly at one point, was down around 0.7%. And only subsequently, uh, we treat the losses over there. So if Trump were to actually again launch some kind of missiles into North Korea, uh, we believe the kind of uh, safe haven play will be more and more uh, loud. As you can see over here, US is trying to uh, control not just the serious side of things, but as well as uh, Korea. So if more and more action has been taken by Trump uh, from the war zone kind of a point of view, then chances are that people will be more uh, skeptical about the risk on mode and chances are that they will be more uh, fearful of getting into equity market which is supposed to be a risk on kind of play. So definitely when uh, Trump actually does something uh, to Korea, South, I mean North Korea, there is a high chance that we will see uh, equity market sell off again like we did uh, last Friday, at least on the intermediate term. Okay, if there's no more questions, then we'll end today's webinar here. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks.